what we're going to talk about tonight is something that everybody in this room can do. Don't have to get on Amazon, order online, you can do it yourself. So what we're going to talk about are simple antennas. And I call them the big three. Dipoles, verticals, and random length long wires. There's some rules about antennas, and I'll get into that in a moment. But to give you an idea how simple it is for you to build one and make your own and don't have to, you know, use MFJ and pay $59 for an antenna that you can build for 22 or less, <clears throat> you can get most of the materials at Lowe's. All you need is some wire, something to make insulators with, and some coaxial cable. That's the one thing that you can't get at Lowe's, this coaxial cable. So you probably will have to get on and satisfy that requirement on either eBay or Amazon, whatever. A roll of 500 feet of wire at Lowe's is about 59 bucks. And build a lot of wire antennas with 500 feet of it. Insulators, you can make out make them out of anything that's non-conductive, depending on whether you know you're only going to have it up for a, a day, or two days, or two weeks, or a month. But if you're going to put it up permanently, then you want something that's going to withstand the weather as an insulator. I've used pill bottles, two holes in a pill bottle. There you go. You got insulator. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Disconnect either end of that. All right. It's insulated from the poles. Put the wire on it, fire it up and feed it. You might be surprised what it'll do, depending on how big it is, how, you know, what the area is. All right, so let's go back just for a moment about the different antennas. Dipole antennas, pretty simple to build. And if you're going to have them horizontal, then you have to have a support at each end. Another, a, a way around that, you can do that with a dipole and just use a single, uh, a single support. <clears throat> In that case, it's called an inverted V. So basically what you have is a half wave dipole, looks sort of like that. I mean, I'm not a great artist, by the way. I never won any awards about, on that stuff. That's the shield of the coax, that's the center conductor. One side, the center conductor goes to one side of the, the wire, the other side goes to the opposite side. There's an insulator here and then one on each end. The simplest antenna to build that there is. You can take this same antenna. Now in this case here, you'd have to have supports out here. But what you can do is use a single support and then just take, a, go down like that. If you do that, it'll, it'll perform very well for you. It's simple, it's effective, and they work. The way, I know, the way I know they work is because there isn't any of these antennas that I haven't used at one time or another over the last 68 years in AM radio. <clears throat> if you got a 40 meter, if, if you got a 40 meter antenna, I'll, I'll cover the formula in just a second. You want the antenna about a half wave above ground if you can get it there minimum of a half wave above ground. If you can't get it about half wavelength above ground, don't worry about it. Just put the thing up and get on the air. Okay? So <clears throat> if, <clears throat> how high is your 40 meter Yagi though? About 60 feet, isn't it? 50, feet. 50 almost half wave. Or, well, quarter wave. Not, not quite, not quite half. Yeah. 468 over F. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, that works really well. Any of these antennas will work. That's the thing I'm trying to, I, I want to get across. If I don't get anything across tonight, it's put it up, put your radio in it, and see if you can work somebody. I can guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you string a wire out the window and run it 25 or 30 feet, and you've got a radio that's got a tuner in it that'll tune it, you'll talk to people. There you go. Okay, so that's a that's a that's a half wave. Two two configurations of a half wave. Last configuration of a half wave. Vertical. You can make it. You can make a half wave, and you can actually put it up vertical. Bad thing about that is, is when you when, when the feed line, this feed line in the center, ideally you would want it to come out at at uh, ninety degrees to it. So not, not too many people do that. Okay. Any questions on dipoles? Nobody said, okay. Yes. Absolutely. It will, okay. That, the, the only thing that changes when you change the configuration of these things is the radiation pattern. And what happens, as an example, uh, I'll draw the patterns up here. For a horizontal dipole, we're gonna look at it from the top, okay? We're looking down at the antenna. Let's make this west and make this east. Okay, so this antenna, looking down on this dipole, is now east and west. The radiation pattern from this, the, the maximum effective area that it's going to cover is going to look like a figure eight. So it, it's going to radiate best north and south. If you turn it around this way, it's going to, what, east and west. Here's the beauty of an inverted L, or yes, Bill. I was going to say, but it, it it will it, right it gets a little it gets a little wonky but the thing is it'll still work all right now if you take this antenna and turn it this way obviously it's going to be favor east and west so if you're going to put it up horizontal orient it so it's broadside to the areas that you want to work two inverted v what happens in inverted v the pattern, as Bill just pointed out, on any antenna, gets distorted. So, but that's the reason I sort of like inverted Vs myself, because you don't lose all the signal here. The pattern on an inverted V looks, it's, it looks something like this. It's distorted, but it, it it favors omnidirectional. So there, there, there is an advantage to that, to an inverted V. One thing that you wanna remember, I can put up an inverted V at my house and tune it and it works like gangbusters. If I take that same antenna and take it over to Bill's house and he hangs it at the same, at the same uh, height that I had it, in the same direction, 85% chances he's gonna to have to retune it because of where it's at. Buildings, fences, soil, all affect the radiation pattern of the antenna. So we need to start somewhere though, don't we? We need to know how long, how, how much wire we're gonna to have to cut and whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the basic the uh, the basic formula. Which is 468 over F for a half wave. 
Anybody got a calculator? Don't tell me you nobody got a calculator. You all got phones. I just want somebody to crunch numbers for me. Who, who, you can do it, Bill? Or you can do it, Kevin? Okay, I want to make this antenna for, I'm going to put it right in the middle of the phone band. That's where I'm going to initially, that's where I want to put this in. When I say put it, that's frequency wise for uh, 7190. 60, even? Uh, 65.090. Oh, that's 65 feet. Okay. So this 40 meter antenna now is going to be 65 feet, right? Right. However, when you cut this thing, don't lay it out on the ground, measure off 65 feet, cut it in two. Okay. Because that's a halfway. We're going to cut it in two. The whole antenna is a halfway. So we're going to, we're going to be feeding it in the middle. So we're gonna to have to cut it in half, which is what? 32 and a half feet. Okay, so it's 32 and a half feet. So we cut 30, we very diligent. We cut it and we measure it out and everything. <clears throat> and we, we stick it up in the air. You get in, turn on the radio. And I'll, now, oh, the SWR, the standing wave ratio is too high. What happened? Well, we didn't take into consideration our surrounding the stuff that's around us. Do when you do this formula, 468 over F, and it says 65 feet two inches, you better add yourself, particularly on 40 and 80 meters. As you go up, as you go down lower in frequencies, it takes more to move them. I would, I, on, on 40 meters, I always, I cut all my antennas 70 feet on each side. That's just rule of thumb. And then I tune them from there. It's a lot easier to cut it off than it is to put wire back on. Or you can fold it back, yeah. You, yeah, that's good. Uh, glad you, uh, let's see, that was that note number 13. But good idea. Uh, and no, that makes a good point. You can fold it back on itself, and and it will, it will, for practical purposes, it'll act like it's cut. Okay. The good part about that, though, Bill, and I've done it, and I, maybe you've done it. I, I know maybe some other people have done it. I, I I cut them along. I find out where the resonant up in the phone band. Okay. And I find out where the resonant down in the bottom end of the band. And then when I know how resonant they are, I can mark them. And then when I want to go to the phone band, okay, or go up in frequency, all I need to do is shorten it up a little bit. And when I want to go back down on into the CW in the digital band, I just go outside, pull the ends loose, slide it back up, hook it back up. <clears throat> yeah. You, yep. You can do that too. There's all kinds of things you can do, and it's simple. It's that that's what that's a beauty. That's a beauty about ham radio. It can be made to be simple. Yes. What's the advantage of making it long and tuning the antenna as opposed to using the tuner the radio? That is the best question that anybody could have asked tonight. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the problem is. We're talking about matching impedance here. Your radio, okay, your radio has a 50 ohm output. They're designed that way. One. Two, they're solid state. Solid state devices don't like heat. Three. So I hook this up to my radio, this antenna no tuner, and I fire it up and it's got a 1.2.6 SWR. Oh, not a problem. I just hit the tuner. So I hit the tuner and man, that thing goes zinka, 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 zinka. Man, I'm one to one now. The transmitter knows it's one to one. Because that's what the tuner is doing, is matching the antenna. 
You don't get anything for nothing. Loss. True, Bill? Yes. Loss. Unfortunately, maybe it's Yeah, maybe it's coach, but it's loss. That's the reason I am a proponent of what we call resonant antennas. Feed point on this dipole, give or take 50 ohms. Impedance of the feed line, 50 ohms. I put impedance of my brand new DX10, guess what it is? 50 ohms. Match, match, match. What does it end up to be? Loss. That's what, what? You got that right as good as you can be. Yep, you got it as good as you can be. No loss, okay? When you use an antenna tuner, and, and I use antenna tuners, I have antenna tuners, I use them, I know what they do, okay? And I know, I say, well, probably gonna be a little lossy. But the point is, is that that energy has got to be dissipated somewhere. And it's not being all dissipated at the antenna. The antenna tuner is dissipating heat, all right? Without getting into real deep electronics on how that happens, Take my word for it and for sure, Bill. True fact. Okay, so <clears throat> what we've covered here is got half wave dipoles, great, easy to put up, cheap to do. The only thing you have to pick up is coax. Let's talk a bit about coax. On HF, right up until you get up to 28 megahertz. There is loss in the coax. None of it is, per, none of, there is no coax that all this energy gets to that feed point. There's loss. So coax is important. <clears throat> on HF, on HF, you can get away with RG58. That's Anybody know what RG58, small coax? You can get away with that stuff as long as it's not a real long run, 50 feet, okay? And you don't want to run over about 100 watts into it on HF. You'd be fine. It'll work. When you get up to 10 meters is where you're going to take the beating. When you get up to 28 megahertz, because it's going to get pretty lossy at 28 megahertz. Let's say, for example, piece of RG58 coax feeding my half wave dipole, half wave above the ground. And this thing uh, uh, is gonna be cut for 10 meters now, but I've got RG58 I'm feeding it with. Uh, I don't remember right offhand, but eh, let's say three dB. We probably, I, I probably have about three dB of loss in this coax feeding this dipole antenna. I'm running a 100 watt radio. So I got 100 watts output, feed lines matched, and I've got 100 feet of RG58. I've got 100 watts out here. When I get to the antenna, I'm gonna have about 50 watts. Like I said, not gonna get anything for free. That 50 watts, and that is being dissipated, right down that feed line. That's the reason why you use small feed line running high power, RG58 and running, you know, seven, 800 watts into it, you're probably gonna get yourself in trouble. In fact, you're probably gonna set the coax on fire. Okay, any questions? Yeah, Bill. One to one stop loss is say maybe three dB and 100 feet and 20 meters. You 
Yeah. So the right the right the moral of the story is simply this. Fifty ohm coax, fifty ohms out at the radio, and fifty ohms at the antenna. That's the good scenario. But we don't live in a perfect perfect world. Unfortunately. So we have antenna tuners. Okay, I'm okay with antenna tuners. But when you put this dipole up, get it as close as you can. Go ahead and let, put the tuner in line. If it, you know, if the SWR is 1.4 to 1 and you feel comfortable, you'd like to get it down to like zip, you go ahead and let the tuner tune it out. Okay, you're not going to lose, uh, you know, all that much there. All righty, any other questions on dipoles? Okay. One thing I did want to mention. The, there are a lot of different antennas out there. One of them that has been around for a long year, long time, it's made by, uh, or I think it will work, conjured up. Conjured up by a, an Englishman, Barney. Don't remember his call. Oh, yes, I do. G5RV. Anybody ever heard of that antenna? G5RV? Yeah. Okay, let me tell you, I, I just, I, did, I don't want you going on Amazon spending money you don't need to and buying one from MFJ. If you want to, and you want to put it up, and you want it to work, okay, then right out of the gate, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to get it off the ground, horizontal. You probably get away with it in V, but they don't, they don't like that all much. And the reason for that is, is that the feed line is a radiator. It radiates RF. Antenna was conjured up to do that. Basically, what you have is you have a half-wave dipole. Yeah, much, there we go. Half-wave dipole fed with ladder line, open, open wire feeder or 600 ohm, whatever, uh, twin lead, and then a piece of coax coming into the shack. <clears throat> the problem with this is, is this got to stay straight? That feed has got to be straight. And if I remember on the G5R, it's like 35 feet. So now you've got your 66 foot antenna here, 30 foot feed line, coax going in the shack. This part and that part got to be horizontal. I do not recommend G5 RVs. I have, I, I'm just telling you my own personal experience. I've never been able to get one to work with a dam. Okay. Some people swear by them. Just not me. Okay, let's talk about verticals a little bit. Vertical is probably the easiest antenna to put up. I believe, again, we're talking about impedance. 50 ohm feed point on the vertical, quarter wave vertical, 50 ohm coax, 50 ohms at the transmitter. Easiest antenna to deal with, actually. Vertical. This is a quarter wavelength, so, uh, so I'm thinking it's probably what... Uh, or 230, 234 over F? Yeah, 234 over F. 234 over F for, 60, or for an 80 meter, give or take. Okay, six, about 60 feet. So for 80 meters, that thing would have to be about 66 feet tall. <clears throat> okay, verticals, with radio, verticals without radiate, radials do not work as good as they should. Do they work? Yeah, they'll work. Anything I can feed RF to, I can make it work. All right. So now we have a vertical. Let me uh, hold on for a second. So now we have this quarter wave vertical. How long is it going to be? 66 feet, right? Okay, 66 feet. 
66 foot tall vertical. That's pretty high. Will it work just by itself? Yeah. It'll radiate, but it won't radiate well. Yeah. Here we go. Great question. Do I want to make this? Do I want radiate? You mean radiate or radial? Radial. Radial. Great. That's where I'm going. Okay. Yeah, like tires. So I got this 66 foot vertical antenna. How how do I make it work good? Here's how I'm going to make it work good. I'm going to feed it here with my coaxial cable, right there, and then at the base of it. I'm going to get some 66 foot long wires and I'm going to lay them out in a radial, a radial pattern around it. So we end up with the center of the coax hook, hook there and then the radials hooked to the shield of the coax. And we're going to run as many of those babies as we possibly can, the more the merrier. No, no, no. These are. This is a full quarter wave vertical. I'll talk about. I'll talk about your antenna in a minute. Now I'll talk about radials in a minute. Expand on it. <clears throat> Put as many radials on it as you possibly can. Now you have to remember, we're talking about an eighty. Everybody's saying, "Oh man, I ain't got sixty-six feet. I, I can't do that. I can't do that." Well, for forty meters, it's only thirty-three feet. Quarter wave vertical. Yes. Oh, absolutely. No, number 17. Thank you. <laughs> Any antenna that you put up, you want to make sure it's grounded well. Okay. I'm talking about the, the shield of the coax. Yes. What do you have there? Just think about it here a second. You've got 66 feet this way. Who said dipole? Dipole, exactly. You've got a dipole. There you go, Bill. You got a half a dipole sitting over a mirror. The ground is your ground plane. Well, yeah, true. But you don't have to have an acre of land to put. So. Yeah, half an acre. Okay, so anyway, qu quarter way vertical. Here's the beauty about verticals, and I'll tell you some of the bad things about verticals. <clears throat> the good, the good thing, by the way, the good, the good stuff overrides the bad stuff. The good thing about this is a vertical has a low angle of radiation. So my dipole, if I'm on the ground here looking this way, okay. This is a flat ground, and my dipole has a radiation pattern that goes something like this. Okay, that's the RF being radiated off it on a dipole. Okay, on a vertical, the radiation pattern is more like this. It's lower. Okay. Why is that good? <clears throat> Thank you. Distance. Because my signal is being radiated at a lower angle. All right. It goes out further before it hits propagation. The ionosphere. Don't want to go too deep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Verticals are good for working long distances. Verticals are great for working, as we in ham radio call it, DX. They're, they're a good antenna. Hook it up. It won't hurt anything. It won't hurt anything. I use a chain link fence. One of my verticals, I've got a hook to a chain link fence. Where is he? Metal roof. There you go. That's a good. That's a good radiator. As long as the coax is grounded to the roof. Okay. Anything. Anything underneath it that's metal. Yes. 
Uh, last weekend, I was up on the USS Turner Joy, an iron ship sitting in salt water. We had a great radio. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. That's the best you can get. What? What? That, that's that's the reason it, it, when you hear these hams that are out on boats cruising around, you know, out in the Caribbean and whatever, you know, drinking a beer and talking on 20 meters, uh, you know, they got great signals. Why is that? Because they got something trailing in the water and they've got a vertical antenna, so they've got a great low angle of radiation, so they do very, very well with it. Okay. Exactly. So verticals are good. The bad part about verticals is they're a little noisy. They're, nor, they're more prone to man-made noise. That's, that's, you know, that's really the only downside. Yeah. Okay, now, you can, there was a study done, you can make these, you can make, let's say, we're, let's, let's say these are 40 meter radials, okay? Let's, I just magically converted this to a 40 meter vertical. Okay, so now these radials are now only 33 feet. Oh, wait a minute, I want to go on 20 meters. Oh, wait a minute, those, those radials are only 16 feet. Okay, ooh, maybe I'll get on 15. No, let me get on, I think I'll get on 10. Now they're only eight feet long. Here's my point. <clears throat> As I said, any vertical, the more radials you have, the better off you are. You can do that. I've put verticals up, three band verticals, four band verticals, five band verticals, and put radials on each band when I had my home in California. But I can't do that now. I got a nice small yard. Okay. I can outrun my puppy to the other end of it. So my vertical, and I've got one. Who else has got one? Terry's got one. Yeah, Bob, you got one. Uh, we're using a uh, DX Commander. It's a pretty unique antenna. It's a five band antenna. You can make them work, you pick whatever band you want, whatever HF band you want to make them work on. Okay. They'll work 80 through uh, 10 meters. And uh, they work well. And the nice thing about them, and a study was made, not by the guy that makes DX Commander, by the way, but by an antenna guru in California. He found out that you can make these radials here much shorter. In fact, the ones on the DX Commander are only three meters. What's that? About 10 feet? Give it 10 feet, 11 feet, something like that. Okay. And that's, that's, not, that's not real important either. They can be 10 feet or 11 feet. Don't make a difference. Okay. But the good thing about it is you don't need a lot of room. The other side of the, the equation is you need a lot of them. I've got 36 on mine. Okay. But they're only 10 feet long. I mean, if you're going to take, if you're going to take up some ground, why not just put as much down there as you can? That's the whole idea. <clears throat> feed boy, I've, I've, I've used an analyzer on mine and looked at the feed point impedance. And with 36 radials on it, it's about 57 ohms. Now, all the, you know, is there any loss there? Is it as good of is it as good if I had 36 20 meter radials on it? No, it's not. But it's about 2 dB. About 2 dB difference. Not enough to spit at. Okay, so the other nice thing about that is that the, 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 the and I, know, I don't sell DS commanders. Don't get me wrong. If somebody asked me, hey, Jim, would you get a DS commander? I'd say absolutely. Particularly if you've got limited space. You can put this thing up, plant it in the ground. It's only about 32 feet long. It's all fiberglass. You can put six bands on it and go down to Lowe's 
where he sends a whole back. I, yeah, he sends a whole kit anyway. Uh, I had to buy extra wire because I used more than 32 radials on mine. But the fact is, is it's a, it's a good antenna. And you can get on all six bands. And if you tune it, and if you tune it, yeah, yeah, and you can, yes, you can make one of the bands 80 meters, but it's not, doesn't make the antenna 66 feet tall. What the, what the antenna actually ends up being, oh God, for lack of a better word, an inverted L, yeah, quarter way, eh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll call it an inverted L. That's, that's what it looks like. It looks like an inverted L. Because you go up about 32 feet, then I think you add like 30 feet. So I haven't got six, I haven't got 80 meters on mine. So anyway, that, that would be a good antenna. We let's just talk a moment about coaxial cable. Okay. Anybody got any any questions about antennas? Are, are, are you mean for the radials or for just the? Oh yeah, you 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 want your ground hooked on, right, right at the at the feed point if you can. Okay. Sure. You can do that. You can get away with that. A, a, a what? You can probably get away with that too. I'm going to tell you something. Give me enough inductance and give me enough capacitance and I can load a wet noodle. That's just the way it is. What's the what now? What's it do? It's it, it provides your 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 number one. It helps with the MP feed point impedance, but it also gives the antenna something to look at. It's it's your it's your mirror, the post not the mirror. Your ground post is hooked to the radials. It's not going to prevent any kind of uh, lightning. lightning. No. Yeah. 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 I'm going to tell you something right now. I've been hit by lightning, okay? And I had a well-grounded station and I still suffer damage. You just can't. Sure you hear. That, uh, yeah. That's static electricity. That's electrostatic discharge. Uh, good. Do you have lightning suppression, or do you have uh, put a lightning suppressor suppression in the feed line? Yeah, <clears throat> get a MFJ has them. You put them in line with your coax, and what they do is they got it's like a neon bulb or a neon device on the inside. So when a high yeah yeah, it, it, so you get static electricity or electrostatic discharge that discharges it off the ground. I would recommend anybody put up the antennas, put those in their feed line. Are you saying that there was voltage between the ground state and the ground coax? No, I was saying the antenna coax. I just connected it to the radio because it was thundering right on top of my house. But the end of it got that. Of course. Just from that static. Well, that's, yeah, static discharge. I felt like part of the antenna. I was sitting in the shack here when last <laughs> so, <laughs> don't do that. Sunday, okay, so so ground your station the best you can under control here. Okay, I'm gonna go. okay. And the young gentleman from Vermont had a question. Okay. No. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, number 
number three. Anyway, so uh, do you know, do 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 your you know due diligence when it comes to how to ground your station. I've got a ground rod and ground got the station grounded, but I don't care. When it gets thunder bumpers out there, I disconnect my coax and call it a night, or until at least the storm passes. Oh yeah. Yep, I've had that several times too, though. Okay, one last thing here before I, I want to stay within the time limit. Uh, NFED long wires, and I'll just talk, and NFED half wave wires. When I say half wave, what's the frequency? 468 over F, it's a half wave length long. You feed it on the end. There you go, with coaxial cable. Requires a balance. Balance looks something like this. All right, I'll pass this around. This ballon is a four to one ballon. And I built this actually for a off center fed uh, antenna. I just can't talk about all the different antennas. I just want to talk about the simple antennas. Okay, off center, I have an off. Anyway, pardon? A four to one ballon means simply this my feed point impedance on a off center fed is about 200 ohms, give or take. I need to get that matched down to the coax. Okay, so what this is, is I show, uh, Ballon is the official name for it. It's a transformer. It's a four to one transformer. It goes from two, 200 ohms down to 50 ohms. That's what it is. It's transformed the impedance. And the reason I've got two cores stacked in here, because this is a high power Ballon, uh, I can run my kilowatt with this, all right? <clears throat> it's wound with Teflon wire. And it's also uh, got, uh, those are 243, uh, FT243 cores. But for a, for a, a hundred watt radio, which most of the radios come from the, you know, from birth now, our hundred watt radio, uh, a single core would probably handle, but you wanna use Teflon wire. And you don't wanna look at the price of Teflon wire. That's the reason balance are so expensive. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so any other questions? One thing is a passing note. If you're on VHF, if you're feeding a VHF antenna, nothing less than LMR 400 half inch feed line. Otherwise you're gonna have a ton of loss. All right. Now there are very, very variations of that. LMR 400, 9913, RG8, uh, well, there's probably, yeah, but you want to make sure that you're using low loss, my, my key here is low loss coaxial cable, otherwise your 20 watt radio in the shack, when it gets through 50 feet of RG58, probably is more like six watts at the antenna, that's going to be what your radiated power is going to be. Or one watt, yeah, depends. Yeah, yeah, it depends how much coax you got. Any other questions? Yes. Sure, sure, just briefly. <clears throat> PL259 connectors are good for anything up to 10 meters. Actually, you can get away with them on two meters. I run a kilowatt on two meters and yeah, I've got PL259, but it'll handle the power at two meters. When you get, go up higher in frequency, you go above two meters, go above 144 megahertz, uh, then you wanna start looking at using N connectors and they're lower loss. They don't, they don't, do not introduce an impedance bump at that frequency in your feed line. We can cover that again. Answer questions, is that good enough? Okay, anybody else? All right, thank you so much. Yes. End connectors. They're just another form of coaxial connector. Okay. The most common coax connectors, two, there's two that are used. One of them is a PL259. That connector is used on most, it's on, used on RG8 
NLMR 400 half inch coaxial cable. Okay, that's the common one. Okay, there is one other one. It's a smaller one that I use them for uh, test equipment, jumpers and stuff like that. And they're called BNC connectors. But you don't want to, you do not want to use any anything that's small. No. Yes. Yes, I run sideband. No, nah, yeah, I'm probably the only guy that ever, and I don't get on very often. I, I, I work a lot of, of uh, meteor scatter and uh, uh, Earth, Moon, or EME. But uh, yeah, you want to get on, give me a call. I'll, I'll get on side that way. All righty, any, any other questions? Thank you so much, folks. Have a great evening. Thanks.